The second law of thermodynamics is about which processes can occur in nature and which do not. For example, when two objects with different temperatures are in contact with each other, heat flows from the hotter object to the colder one spontaneously. But the reverse never happens spontaneously. Even though energy can still be conserved if heat flows from a colder object to a hotter one. Furthermore, some processes are irreversible, which means that they can only happen one way spontaneously, while their reverse processes can never happen spontaneously. For example, this dropped egg breaks and splatters when it hits the glass bowl. That is a natural process. But have you ever seen the reverse happen? I mean, have you ever seen a splattered egg get back together as a whole egg and back onto my hand? No. This is also called the arrow of time or the asymmetry of time because such one-way processes only evolve in one direction with time and not the other. The second law of thermodynamics can be stated in many different ways, all of which can be proven to be equivalent to each other. Here we will discuss four of those equivalent statements of the second law. The first statement is, uh, heat flows spontaneously from a hot object to a cold one, but not the reverse, by Rudolf Clausius. This Clausius statement basically says that uh, there are no free refrigerators, in the sense that the colder inside of a refrigerator cannot dump heat into a warmer kitchen spontaneously. The next one is by Lord Kelvin. There can be no 100% efficient heat engine, that is, one that can change a given amount of heat completely into work. We can easily turn 100% of work into heat. For example, I can rub my hands together and then stop. All that mechanical energy is turned into heat. Or you can step on the brakes to stop a car. All the car's kinetic energy would turn into heat but we can never collect all that heat and turn 100% of that heat into mechanical work. This next one is Ludwig Boltzmann's view of the second law. Natural processes tend to move toward a state of greater disorder or greater entropy. The term entropy was coined by Clausius in 1865. Entropy is a measure of a system's disorder. Entropy is a function of state, which means a system at a certain state can be said to have a certain amount of entropy. This entropy statement of the second law is the one that is directly related to the arrow of time. When we go forward in time, the entropy of the universe increases. The second law explains why the reverse of an egg falling, breaking, and splattering does not happen in nature even though the reverse process still follows the conservation of energy, the first law of thermodynamics. We don't see a splattered broken egg get back into the eggshell and form an unbroken egg in nature because the natural processes do not move toward greater order. Of course, one may question how entropy actually decreases when water freezes into ice crystals or all that food we eat and the air we breathe end up giving us uh, living organisms that are in greater order. You know, we have cells and organs that are highly organized. How can we explain that? Do the living organisms defy the second law of thermodynamics? No, they do not. This is because the water that freezes into ice and the living organisms are not isolated nor closed systems. For example, we sweat and pass waste into the environment. Our entropy decreases at the expense of the greater entropy increase 
of our environment. So the total entropy of the universe increases. This next statement of the second law is by Max Planck. A perpetual motion machine of the second kind is impossible. A perpetual motion machine is a self-sustained machine that produces work. A frictionless pendulum or orbiting planet will exhibit perpetual motion but without producing work, so they are not perpetual motion machines. A perpetual motion machine violates the laws of thermodynamics. A perpetual motion machine of the first kind violates the first law of thermodynamics. A perpetual motion machine of the second kind violates the second law of thermodynamics. For example, let's consider this perpetual motion machine. Water up here falls and makes the paddle wheel rotate, which turns a generator, which generates electricity that drives a pump. That pumps the water back up, and then the water comes down again and keeps this machine running on and on. This perpetual motion machine violates the first law, the conservation of energy, because the machine makes sound, so some energy is lost through sound and the heating up of the environment. This means not all energy remains in the system, so this machine does not keep its energy to run on and on forever. It also violates the second law because the friction, air resistance, and the resistance in the electric circuits produce heat. And according to the second law, not 100% of this heat can be converted into mechanical work to pump all the water back up. For this course, you need to be able to recognize that these are all equivalent statements of the second law.